blueprints ready. Devin, we ready on the camera. Daredevil, are we ready on the board? We're ready here at the Golf Kingdom. It's time to build. Are you ready to join me today? Here's what we got going on in the show. Let's bring in our show. It's gonna be awesome tonight. We're going to build a better impact for you right off the top of the show. Better impact right away. We're gonna follow that up with a new segment that you're not gonna to wanna to miss. It's Talk Nerdy to Me. Don't miss Talk Nerdy to Me. We're gonna have lots of fun in that segment. Building your game with a swing formula. After that, our guest Scott Fawcett shows up to share with you some strategy to help your game. On the bottom side of the show, it's just hot air, and then we're gonna close with time to rise. Are you ready? Because it's time to go here at the Golf Kingdom. The Golf Kingdom, brought to you by Accenture Insurance, tailor-made, and executive air conditioning. It's gonna be fun here in our Build It segment as we improve impact. That's the moment of truth when the club meets the ball. And I see a lot of bad impacts and I have a great drill. No, a fabulous drill to help you line up impact. So let's get building impact by explaining what's done wrong. So here's what happens as we build impact. When players get set up to hit the ball, they think that they come back to impact kind of lined up the same way they are at setup with this kind of broken down. You've heard people say, impact and setup are the same, you're trying to get back here. Well, that's not necessarily true. What we're trying to do impact is get the lead arm lined up straight and get our hips turned open. But the question is, how do we do that? What's a drill to do that? So the error I see at impact is, everybody comes in impact and they break down right here. They're flipping the club, they're adding loft on it, and that leads to a lot of top shots and it also leads to a lot of shots that just kind of are bloopers way up in the air because I've got, see, I've got a five iron here if I'm adding loft to that five iron, now it's a seven iron. Now, if you're looking for more distance, maybe if we keep the loft on the five iron and don't turn it to a seven iron by breaking down, we can hit it farther. This is where we get into my impact drill, and it's an isometric drill. Now, isometrics are something we've done as kids growing up all the time. If you've ever stood in a doorway and pushed your arms out as hard as you could for like 30 seconds and then stepped away from the door and your arms float up, well, that's called Konstam's phenomenon, and it involves pushing and opposing forces where all of a sudden you feel the feeling of pushing against the door still and your arms rise. This is how we help impact with an isometric or a Konstam's phenomenon drill. What you're gonna do is you're gonna get something that won't move. So I've taken my staff bag and I've laid it down on the ground here. This won't move, it's not going anywhere. You can use a table leg, you can use the wheel of a golf cart if you're on the golf course, anything that won't move. It can be practiced at home, it can be practiced out on the golf course. Anywhere you got something that won't move. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna take your club, it could be a five iron, could be a seven iron, whatever you wanna do, get set up to the stationary object, turn your hips, get your weight on your front leg, and now you're gonna push against the bag as hard as you can, and you can see the, the shaft of the club bending a little bit. I'm pushing as hard as I can, and I'm gonna push for about 10 seconds here, getting that left arm lined up, feeling a lot of pressure on this hand, making it straight. Now when I step away and I take a little swing here, oh wham, I lined right up at that spot. This drill will give you the feeling right away. So practice it with both hands, practice it with left hand, practice it with right hand. If you practice it with right hand, you'll get the feeling of this angle right here at impact and we'll line it up better and hit more quality compressed golf shots. This drill is phenomenal for helping you build a better impact. It's time to talk nerdy. And you're probably wondering, what's with the lab coat and the glasses? Well, I need the glasses to see, obviously. But now we're gonna talk about a little bit of science in golf, and I've got a swing formula to help make the game easy. So I don't care if you're just learning the game, or you're interested in picking up a golf club, maybe you've played for a while, or you're an accomplished player. This swing formula will help you know where to move the club, where to move your body, and how to swing. And you can always go back to it if you're struggling. It's a simple formula. Follow me, I'm gonna show you the formula right here. So the formula, it's very simple. It's A plus triangle plus L plus rectangle plus Y equals I. That's what it equals. So bring that daredevil, bring that up on the full screen so everybody can see it. A plus triangle plus L plus rectangle plus Y equals I. So if you know your shapes and your letters, 
we can build a golf swing. Daredevil, come back on me now. Now, let me take you through each part of this equation. Let's start with the A first. So here's what the A means. And if you've ever been angry at someone, you stand like this. You cross your arms, your feet go out fairly wide, about shoulder width, and you, you strike this position where you look like a capital letter A. That's the A in the equation. I call it the angry A. So if you're trying to find your setup, just simply you take the angry A and from here, you bend your angry A. And there's my setup right there. That's the first letter of the equation, the A. Now, the second part of it is the triangle. Now we're gonna start moving the body and moving the club. So we make our angry A, and when I bend and bring my hands and arms together, my hands and arms form a triangle right here. When I bring the club in, here's what my triangle looks like. The first part of the swing is, I'm gonna move my triangle to the right till my hands pass my right leg. Not, not forever back, just right here. My triangle is going to move to the right. My hands are going to clear my leg. And that's the second part of your equation. So A plus triangle gets the club moving. Now, this might be the most important letter of the backswing, and that is the capital letter L. If you can learn how to make a capital letter L in your backswing, you can swing the club pretty successful every time going back. So once again, I go angry A, I bend, make my triangle. I move my triangle back outside my right leg. Now from here, I'm gonna come back and make my left arm go parallel to the ground, and my hands will actually activate here, and this is where the wrist cock happens. And you can see the club is up, left arm is parallel to the ground, and here's your capital letter L. From the down the line look, you'll see triangle, and then the club up, and here's your 90 degree angle right there. There's the L. A plus triangle plus L. Now let's bring the club down and we're gonna talk about the rectangle. The rectangle. I draw the rectangle from my shoulder tips down to my hip bones and across. This makes a rectangle. As I come down, I just want the rectangle to turn like this. Very easy thought. So A, triangle, L, and then I'm gonna turn the rectangle. I'm gonna get this rectangle in the inner, inner part of me moving and turning. Now, I'm coming to the moment of truth. I'm coming to the impact position. And like you saw in the build it segment, I helped you build good impact. I'm gonna help you build it again here by understanding how to make the second to last symbol, the Y. So A, triangle, L, rectangle starts to turn. Now when I get to impact, I wanna look like a capital letter Y. You can see I'm straight on this side and this is angled inward. I don't wanna be looking like this out like that. I want to come down from my L, turn my rectangle, and bang, I line up my left arm and my left side perfectly straight here at the moment I slam into the ball. From there, I keep turning that little rectangle in the middle, and I come around to the eye finish where I'm straight up and down. I'm looking up for the ball, and you can see I'm straight up and down, a nice letter I. I'm not leaning back in over old, that old reverse C that hurts your back. I am just a straight up and down I. So, Quick review here as we look at this. A, triangle, L, rectangle, Y, and then the letter I. Here we go. Angry A, I bend over. Now my triangle moves to the right. My hands will cock the club up, left arm parallel to the ground. There's my L. I turn my rectangle to impact, where I become the letter Y right here, and then I finish in my I. Practice that at home in front of your mirror. Tape this formula, write it down, tape it to your mirror, and practice it. Pose in these positions. If you can pose them, you can do them. We're only as good sometimes as we can pose and stand. Your body will start to learn these spots. The swing formula, right here, it's helping you understand how to move the club. And you know what? We've had fun talking nerdy to you here in the Golf Kingdom. Well, you know me, and you know I love to go pop culture here at the Golf Kingdom. Whether it's a movie, or a TV show, a catchphrase, or music, I'll do anything to help you with your game, even it involves singing and dancing a little. But we're not gonna do any of that right now. I'm gonna go where in the world is Rob without actually going to this other place. But we're gonna go somewhere else to help your putting. Now, one of the errors I see in putting is people set up like they're gonna take a full swing. So they get set up with their weight equal on their feet. Well, there's a problem with that. When we swing a golf club, we shift our weight around. When we putt, we don't want any of that. We don't want to be shifting and moving around when we putt. 
one degree of face change at 10 feet when we putt is going to miss the hole. So if it's a straight putt and you move that face around one degree, it's going to miss right or left. So we want to stay dead still when we putt. Now the question is, how do we stay dead still? That's where we're going to go, where in the world is Rob? And I'm going to show you a cool place here that's going to help our putting. What's that right there? That's the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So the Leaning Tower of Pisa is going to help us with our setup and putting. Let me explain. I said earlier, you get your weight all 50-50 when you putt, and that allows you to be wobbly. What I want you to do is lock your weight on your front leg. So instead of being here all balanced out, I'm going to get myself leaned on my front leg. I feel like I'm 60% here, kind of leaned left like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So I'm going to get set up. My ball position is going to be good up here towards like the logo of my shirt. I'm going to get set up and I'm going to feel a little left heavy and I'm going to lock myself there. So when I take my stroke, I am not going to be moving around. I'm locked on my front leg. If I get 50-50, well, I can shift and wobble around. Get set up, get a little extra pressure on your right foot like you're pushing down to the ground, 60%, and that will help you lock down your putting and probably help you control your face. If you can keep your body still and control your face, guess what? You can make more putts. So get like the Leaning Tower Pisa here. A little lean left, and you know what? I think you'll make a lot of putts this summer on the golf course. You want a golf tip that will really make this game easier? Okay, here's mine. The fastest way to get good is by finding a great coach. And the fastest way to find that person is through GolfChannelAcademy.com. It'll match you up with the best coaches in your area. And now you can even schedule a new student assessment. So, what are you waiting for? Schedule a training session with your local coach, Rob Strano, from Strano Golf Academy in Destin, Florida at StranoGolf.com. We're excited to have back in the golf kingdom my buddy Scott Fawcett from Decade Golf. Now we're talking shotguns and shot patterns today with Scott. That's not exclusive to when you're going hunting. That'll help you with your golf game if you understand it. And we're all about building your golf game in the golf kingdom. And Scott, great having you back here. Tell everybody, we're talking shotguns and shot patterns. What does that mean in the game of golf? Well, it's this idea that I've been talking about for a number of years now that we've got a shotgun, not a sniper's rifle. And that's the problem. Like when you listen to commentators on TV and they're like, what an amazing shot because he hit it by the hole. You have no idea where he was actually aiming that shot. What you're looking at here is last year's PGA Tour Rookie of the Year, Aaron Wise. We were filming some content for Course Kings and we had him hit 27 irons in a row that we normalized to no win. So this is, I mean, I'm not going to say it's as good as it could get, but... This is a, just the reality of his shot patterns. The shot to the left is, is, is 22 yards left, and the shot to the right is 12 yards right. So his shot pattern with a 7-iron from 185 yards is 34 yards right, or 34 yards wide, rather. That's amazing. And it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And so if you really think about the idea of, of targeting golf shots, it's simply a, a matter of variance within your shot pattern. When you go on to the next slide now, and you look at distance control, not only do amateurs, with all due respect to amateurs, not really have a good idea of where it's going, but uh, distance control-wise, but PGA Tour players don't either. Everyone is playing for essentially this 80th percentile of their distance shots. So when you have a hole with nothing short, like number 13 here at Riviera, you'll see these professionals coming up short all the time because it's not like you can over-pure a golf shot, but you certainly miss hit a whole bunch. The image to the right there is Aaron Wise now trying to hit 20 110-yard sand wedges. And as he's trying to hit at 110 yards, he only hit four out of 20 actually beyond 110. Now he hit a whole bunch 107, 8, and 9, which is really impressive. But at the end of the day, you've got this, this, this shotgun that has both a width for uh, directional control and a depth for distance control, and then when you're actually going to hit shots close, you have to get both of those things somewhat lucky. That's amazing when you think about the PGA Tour players struggle with that. And you and I both know from working with amateurs, they'll hit that one seven iron that'll go 170 or 180, and that's their yardage, and they don't understand 
this shotgun pattern. It's really important that players can see that and understand you've got to understand where that lays and how it goes. That's awesome stuff, Scott. Absolutely. Well, and that's where when you take it on out and you look at Cameron Champ, who sat through my seminar twice, and when he won in Jackson last year, here he is on the 13th hole, and you can hear his caddy pretty clearly say, are you committed to a target that's four yards right of the four yards left of the hole. He winds up hitting it to nine feet and making it for birdie. But when you look at what laying his shot pattern over, over that exact hole, the green is 17 yards wide up front. The pin was four yards from the right edge. And he was trying to aim it, centering his shot, shot pattern, if you will, four yards left of it. He's essentially with a gap wedge going for the dead center. of what I mean, 17 yards is a pretty narrow green. But when you start looking at these images, you do realize that where he happened to hit it in that shot pattern is variance, and that's kind of what you're waiting out for the weeks that you win in golf, which is why nobody wins very often in golf. It's, and that's amazing to think a tour player like Scott Fawcett is aimed, like a tour player like Cameron Champ is aimed to the right there, and, and he's trying to hit that shot in there and is just playing to the center of the green. That's where understanding the shotgun pattern is important, and you'll learn more about this if you follow Scott. Jump over to his Twitter, follow him at Scott Fawcett, F-A-W-C-E-T-T, at Twitter, also playinglessons.com online. Scott, great having you here on the Golf Kingdom, and you continue to build our players' games and help them understand how to aim and play better. Great seeing you, and thanks for being here again. Thank you. It's awesome to have Scott here always, and it's a great opportunity for you here on the Golf Kingdom to learn from a guy who's working with a ton of tour players on their games. So he's just not telling you theory. Remember, he's a truth teller. He's telling you guys exactly what you need to do to play better golf. And that's what we're doing here in the Golf Kingdom. We're building your game. Fitness is really important to me, and I know it's important to a lot of you out there. And we're gonna talk some interesting stuff here with our PT Solutions fitness coach, Leanne. Leanne, how you doing today? Hi, welcome back to the Golf Kingdom. It's great to have you back, and I know we're gonna talk about some mobility stuff today. And mobility is really important in golf, especially when it comes to the spine. Tell us something great. Okay, so today everyone, we're talking about cervical rotation, especially to the left-hand side. This is really important so you can maintain eye contact while you hit the ball. So, when you go back like this, you wanna make sure you can be able to turn your head all the way through. So what we're gonna do for our mobility drill in this plane is to go onto all fours, and you're gonna work into rotation. So you wanna put your hand behind your head and look all the way up. And then you're going to rotate all the way in. And then look all the way up and rotate all the way in. It's a good drill for you guys to maintain the mobility of your cervical spine and thoracic spine mobility. That is fantastic. I've got a little bit of back issue that gets tight when I practice. And this mobility stuff is great for me, Leanne. It's a pleasure to see you again on the Golf Kingdom. That was awesome stuff from Leanne at PT Solutions. So out there, if you've got these mobility issues with your cervical spine, do that exercise. It'll help you after you practice, and I guarantee you the next day you're going to feel a lot better and want to practice and play more. To find a PT Solutions fitness coach near you, jump out there at their website, search, and you'll find someone great like Leanne to help you with all your fitness needs. It's time for It's Just Hot Air, and we've covered some things that are myths and misconceptions of golf, or hot air your buddies tell you. And I can tell you what, here in the studio it's hot, and I've got a hot tip that's a misconception in golf to help you with your game. So let's grab a club and explain this. One thing you hear all the time is, I gotta keep my left arm straight. Now keep in mind, everybody's different. I see a lot of golf swings, but I also see a lot of different people. If everybody's different, then the left arm straight thing cannot be 100% true. Let me explain if this is something you try to do and maybe it shouldn't be right for you. Now for me, I'm still athletic, I'm still pretty flexible. I've got lots of shoulder mobility as I move. So when I move and swing a club, I can keep my left arm straight and still get a pretty big back swing. Now, Let's say you don't have a very big backswing. Let's say maybe you go to do this rotator cuff stretch and you can't pull your arm around in front of your body. I can pull mine flat against my chest here. If you can't get any mobility out of this, well, it's hard for you to go back and I bet your backswing probably will get this far if you keep your left arm straight. A great drill you can check to see if you should be bending your left arm is 
set up, let your arms hang, bring your right hand under your left, put your right hand behind your left, and with your right hand, push your left arm back as far as it will go. See how far it goes. If it doesn't go very far, then you're a candidate for doing this. You're gonna swing back and let the left arm bend just a little. We're not trying to break it down, but let it bend so you can get the club back a little farther and get a little more punch in your swing. If the club doesn't go back far, you don't have any power coming down. Once again, it's a misconception you need to keep your left arm straight. Lee Westwood has had a pretty darn good career with bending that lead arm. Go ahead, let yours bend, get the club back farther, and get a little more punch in your swing. Alexa, open Golf Kingdom. Welcome to Golf Kingdom. Here's your golf tip of the day. Welcome to the Golf Kingdom. I am your host, Rob Strano, and here is today's Pro Pointer. Alexa, stop. If you want more Pro Pointers from me via your Amazon-enabled skill at the Golf Kingdom, be sure to go there and enable it. Every day, I give you a new tip, free, with your Amazon-enabled device. So enable the Golf Kingdom and you'll get a tip from me, your host, Rob Strano, every day. It's time for another Build It segment and I'm gonna help you with a little nursery rhyme to help your game. So my question is, do you have a Humpty Dumpty backswing? Now by Humpty Dumpty I mean, does your swing break apart and you try to put it together before impact? I see it a lot in lessons at the academy where as players swing back, their arms break apart, and then they try to put them back together before they get back to the golf ball. And you know what? Humpty Dumpty never got back together, and your golf swings don't get back together either. Now, I'm gonna explain the Humpty Dumpty thing as we build your backswing. So what happens is, as players swing back, and we're gonna go to the wide camera here, Daredevil. As players swing back, their elbows will break apart, and that's that flying right elbow. You get wide there, and then you try to get it back together coming down, but you don't. So as you go back, you get wide, and then that's, that arm wants to come down like this, and we get that chopping action coming down. Now the question is, how do we keep Humpty Dumpty together? So I'm gonna explain how to keep Humpty Dumpty together, then I'm gonna give you a modification for if you're a different body type who can't keep your elbows together. Now the drill I'm gonna give you, you can do at home, the golf course, anywhere, and you can use something as simple as a Nerf ball, by putting a Nerf ball between your elbows and keeping it in there. I'm gonna demonstrate, but you know what? I, I forgot my Nerf ball, so instead I'm gonna to have to use a Garfield. I did remember to bring Garfield. So I'm gonna put Garfield between my elbows here. I'm gonna lock him in there. So now when I go back, I'm squeezing, I can't come apart. So when I swing back, Garfield keeps my elbows together. and I'm not breaking apart like Humpty Dumpty. So from front view, Garfield's looking right at you. I go back, my elbows stay together. Now when I come down, they stay together too. Down the line view, I go back, elbows together. I come down, elbows stay together. I'm not playing Humpty Dumpty golf and trying to put my swing back together. So Garfield's perfect for you, or a Nerf ball, or anything you can squeeze in there, a balloon. Anything will work to try to keep that elbow connection and not flare them apart. Now. Here's your modification. If you are a thick chested person or have limited mobility, and we did mobility in our fitness segment, if we have limited mobility, you have to let your elbows drift a little. Not a lot like I demonstrated. We don't want them breaking wide apart, but you can let them drift a little bit. It's hard to get that elbow in there if we don't have the mobility. It's okay to let it drift and then come back in. This has been a great build it segment to try to avoid the Humpty Dumpty of your golf game. He broke apart and never got back together, and chances are, if you're breaking apart, you're not getting back together at impact either. One of the things I love here at the Golf Kingdom are lots of questions from our viewers, and we've got one from Daniel. Let's bring it up on the screen here, Daredevil. Daniel asks, I have a dumb question. How high should I tee the driver? So let me give you a quick, easy checkpoint for how high to tee your driver. And it kind of goes to how the driver is meant to be hit. The ball is up on the tee, so the driver is meant to be swung up on it to launch the ball high. 
Here's your checkpoint for the driver. You want half the ball above the top of the club. So you can see I've got half the ball above the top of the club. When you put your T in, you want to kind of check and see, is half the ball above the top of the club? That's the perfect spot to tee your driver, no matter which driver you're using. So it's time to rise here at the Golf Kingdom. And we just had a question from Daniel. And do you remember how he started his question? He began it with the statement that we hear all the time, I have a dumb question. Well, you know what? There are no dumb questions. And I really believe you should strike that sentence from your vocabulary. You should never, ever utter the sentence, I have a dumb question. My challenge to you is never, ever again say, I have a dumb question. The only dumb questions are the ones that are never asked. My players all the time will say to me, hey, coach, I've got a dumb question. I'm like, no, there's no dumb questions. It's how we learned. As a kid, I was asking everybody questions. And once I became a tour player, I asked all the other tour players questions about, hey, this golf course or travel or anything I didn't think I knew. It's the only way we learn, aside from reading, is to ask people who have been there and done that questions about what's the easy way to do this or what's the best way to do it. So I want you to light up the questions in your life. I want you to ask as many questions as you can, especially of the smart people. Remember, the only dumb question is one that's never asked and you're only as good as your questions. So take time to ask people questions that will help you rise up. This has been another great day here on the Golf Kingdom. We've built a lot of great stuff and remember, Get out there on social media, like us on Facebook, check out what we've got going on on Twitter and Instagram at The Golf Kingdom, and I've got a YouTube channel also where some of the clips from the shows are housed. Go there and watch some more stuff about The Golf Kingdom and learn how to continue to build your golf game.